Yo, what's up guys, Mike Red Fox. In this video, we're gonna test Flux. This is gonna be the ultimate overclocking guide for Flux on every 30 series GPU. Here's my test rig on it. I have every 30 series GPU except one. It's the 3050, I'm sorry, just never bought one. Anyway. So on here, I have every 30 series card plus two RTX workstation cards. So just to walk you through before we get started, I have the A2000, 3060, 3060 Ti, 3070, A4000, 3070 Ti, 3080, 3080 12 gigabyte, 3080 Ti, 3090, and 3090 Ti all on this rig. And I've tested it to hell with Flux. I'm gonna walk you through the approach to overclocking for Flux so you can take what I've done and individualize it for your specific GPUs. And then you'll see some of my results to see if you're getting in the right ballpark or not. So let's switch over to Hive OS and take a look first at my results. Let me hide myself so you can see everything by. Uh, so you can see this rig right now in Hive OS, mining flux, and you can see the results that I'm getting right here. You can pause this in case you wanna check how you're doing on your specific GPUs. I'll also jump right away to looking at all of the data that I gathered for achieving those hash rates. Again, here it all is right away, beginning of the video, if you wanna get started. Now, we're gonna walk through how to get the results that I was able to achieve uh, overclocking Flux. So first thing you gotta do, of course, is get the mining software. So the two mining softwares that are currently the best, in my opinion, is gonna be Law Miner. They were really kind of the first to come out and do some tweaks to Flux, and you can see the current version I have on the screen here. This is live in Hive OS, and of course for Windows, I'll leave links down in the description below. And then the other that came out just a little bit later is Mini Z, and I've tested them both extensively. They perform pretty much neck uh, in neck with each other. Some cards seem to be a little bit better with one, some cards a little bit better with the other, but not in a way that it's really worth going out of your way to test each individual miner specifically. So. Anyway, make sure you have one of those, and then let's talk about how to get the best results for your specific GPU, because it's a little different than anything I've at least ever had to do mining any coin that I've mined in the past. So back over to Hive OS. The first thing you wanna do is set up your flight sheet. I'm not gonna walk you through that, but I'm gonna walk you through the uh, extra configuration uh, arguments that you need to add to it. So. The first I wanna start with is locking the memory clock. This is probably something you may have not had to do before, but you absolutely do need to do it with Flux and some of these newer algorithms that have come out. So you wanna lock your memory at 5,001. That is true for all of these cards. I put it in once, it will apply it to every card using Law Miner. If you use Mini Z, you have to put it in for every single GPU. So just lock your memory at 5,001. That is a rule. Next thing is your core clock. You're probably familiar with this if you were mining Ethereum. And you can see I have a different core clock for every single card on here. I went through the painstaking approach of finding the most efficient core to lock at. Now, here's my recommendation. Start at around 1425, and then go up and down in increments of 15 from there to find what gives you the most solutions per second for the least amount of wattage. That's gonna be your efficiency. Find what gives you the absolute most efficiency. And this may be different even with a 3070 versus another 3070, but will certainly be different when you're testing different varieties of cards going from like a 3060 maybe to a 3080. So these are a good starting place for you, but every card's different based on its silicon lottery. So make sure you test specifically for your GPU. Now, you might be going, Mike, why increments of 15? It's a great question. I've seen a lot of people do this wrong. So I'm gonna paste in this command here to Hive OS. And when I do that, what it's gonna show is all the supported memory clocks and all the supported graphics clocks for all the GPUs in this rig. So it's gonna be a lot of information at once. But we're gonna scroll up and we're gonna find just this one last graphics card. All right, here we go. So on this GPU, you can see it's listing the supported clocks. It has memory right there. That's the first supported memory clock. And then you can see graphics starts under and it's all in increments of 15 as it goes down, right? And you can see there's that 1425 that I recommend everybody start on. And then you go up and down in increments of 15 
till you find the most efficient. And you can see as well, if I scroll down here, why are we using 5001 for memory? Well, that is a supported clock, one of the few supported clocks for memory on these 30 series GPUs. And if I go further down, you can see the next one is 810, which is one that will reduce memory even further, which I believe Caspa really likes being locked at 810. So that's the reason why you wanna go up and down in increments of 15, and that's the reason why we're using 5001 for memory. So you're gonna take some time, you're gonna find out what your supported core clock is that gives you the most efficiency and you're gonna lock your memory clock at 5001 and then you're in a really good starting place. And then what you can do is you can come over to your Hive OS and you're gonna be able to offset the core. And what I've done here is I've offset the core plus 300 on every single GPU. And what that continues to do is reduce the wattage further without any impact to your actual solutions per second that your cards are getting. I don't really understand all the magic that's happening behind the scenes there. I think it's reducing the voltage of the core, but if you do, please leave it down in the comments section below. I'd love to learn from you. Now, a couple pro tips when you're testing any algorithm really, but especially Flux. Now, the one thing as we switch over and look at the results that I'm getting in the miner right now is that Flux uses solutions per second. And you can see even right now on the screen that it seems to vary quite a bit during each refresh. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna wait till we get a full refresh because I wanna show you that you should really be looking at integers per second. There we go. So integers per second, you can see right here. If you just double that number, it will give you a static solutions per second that will not change at every refresh. Use that number to divide by your wattage to determine your efficiency. Otherwise, you're gonna be running around in circles because that number is gonna be changing and you're not gonna know if you're making improvements for the better or for the worse. The other thing I highly recommend you do when testing any algorithm is lock your fan speed at a static rate. I always just do 100 so there's no thermal throttling or anything happening, but lock your fan speed at a static rate. You can see I have these right now variable on auto fan because I've already done this work, but I will lock these at 100 because your fans will take wattage too. And you don't wanna be going nuts because your fans are ramping up or ramping down and that's changing the wattage. And then you're looking at solutions per second instead of integers per second. Anyway, you get what I'm saying here. Those are just some pro tips that I think are the best approach for when you're mining and testing any algorithms, but specifically Flux in this example. So once you've done that, once you've found the core lock that works best for you, you got your memory locked at 5001 and you offset your core plus 300, this may vary. If your miner's hanging, won't start, or you're getting crashes, reduce by 10, reduce by 10. You can even go per individual GPU. In this case, I found they all really seem to like plus 300. Once you've done all that, you're done and you're running your cards in the most efficient way you can for mining flux. And you can see some of the absolute uh, best performers that I have in mining flux, I have the 3070 is performing really well, really efficient, as well as the A4000 is doing very well too. And then I guess the card that surprised me the most was the 3090 Ti, I was able to get that wattage down quite a bit for a decent amount of solutions per second. And again, coming over to my hash rate results that you see here, you can see the efficiency that I'm getting, A4000 coming up, 3070 coming up on top, A2000, no surprise there, but even that 3090 Ti able to do uh, really nice uh, on flux. Now I have a 12 card 3070 rig that I wanna show you right now just to see a little bit of the variations that you can get because of Silicon Lottery. So these are all locked at 1425, all 5001 on the memory and all offset plus 300. But you can see some cards running as high as 115 watts for that 61 solutions per second and others running as low as 97 watts for that same amount of solutions per second. That just all comes down to the Silicon Lottery of the individual GPUs and there's just really nothing you can do about it. I'll tell you right now, on this rig, the 3070 Ti that's on here from other cards I've seen people post is just very, very underperforming. Um, and even my 3070 isn't doing as well as some other 3070s that I've seen, which is disappointing because they're both Asus Strix cards, which should have some of the best silicon lottery, I thought. 
They also have giant coolers on them, so that might be taking extra wattage, which is really killing the efficiency for me here. But anyway, that is the approach that I take when overclocking Flux. These are the results that I was able to get. I hope this was incredibly helpful to you. Uh, Flux is something that I've mined for a long, 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 long time. Big fan of the project personally and hope to keep mining it for a long time to come. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below. Uh, if you have any results you wanna share, tips for the community, leave them down in the sec uh, comment section below as well. But hope this video is helpful to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button if you did. Sub to the channel for more GPU and crypto mining content. Join my Discord if you wanna chat. Links down in the description below. Social media links are down there too. And as always, please take care of yourself and each other, and I'll see you in the next video.